in Sharm el Sheikh, Egypt, leaders of countries flooded or parched due to climate change are pleading at the COP27 summit for an urgent financial lifeline from richer nations. Nations very vulnerable to climate change are united in their calls at the summit for richer countries to pay the bill for the damage caused by sea level rise, droughts and extreme storms. Addressing the summit on Tuesday, Bahamas Prime Minister Philip Davis urged nations to get real, saying that acting on climate change is in everyone's self-interest. Leaders of African nations also called for support. President of, Africa, of Ghana, Nanaku Fuado, says the continent needs money to adapt to climate change. He said, quote, no one will win if Africa loses. Earlier this week, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres and Pakistani Prime Minister Mohammed Shebaz Sharif met to define a clear roadmap to deal with the loss and damage in Pakistan, an institutional framework which includes financing. If there is any doubt about loss and damage, go to Pakistan. There is loss and there is damage. And this COP needs to recognize it and needs to define a roadmap a clear roadmap to deal with it and including the creation of an institutional framework including financing in order to address the problems of loss and damage and i hope that pakistan will be able to benefit from this development my appeal to the international financial institutions and to the g20 that will be meeting soon in bali is to create the conditions for mechanisms of debt relief of middle-income countries impacted by natural disasters the size of the one Pakistan had in order to allow resources to be devoted to the investments in resilience and in recovery and the reconstruction that are necessary. Broader level, we seek to add loss and damage to the climate agenda and we hope that all countries come to the COP27 meetings in the spirit you so ably championed as climate justice for all. My goal in the end is the same as yours, Excellency, to not let helplessness become a death sentence in this race against time. Let us plan on working towards that ambition. And for more on this, climate and agricultural specialist and ACET senior fellow, John Asafo Ajay, joins me live from Accra, Ghana. Good to have you join us. Now, African countries are, are expected to go into COP27 in Egypt, speaking, speaking with one voice. Um, what are the top demands and concerns you think they should, African negotiators should bring to the table? Yes. So, and thank you for having me and uh, good afternoon to your viewers. Uh, so at the top of the demands will be the promise that uh, rich countries made in 2015 uh, um, at COP in Copenhagen uh, to provide $100 billion every year to help developing countries undertake climate action. Um, as you know, that hasn't happened. Um, so at COP27, um, Africa, especially the African negotiators, have done their homework and have now determined that Africa's climate needs uh, between 2020 and 2030 will be about $1.3 trillion. So this includes finance for adaptation, mitigation, and also to cover some aspects of loss and damage. Um, uh, and currently, roughly about 30, 30 billion dollars uh, per year. So there, there's a huge finance gap and that will be at the top of Africa's agenda uh, at COP27. But it's not all about money. Um, they're also going to demand for technical assistance to help African countries access some of the climate finance that is al already available. Um, African, African countries uh, face huge uh, obstacles in accessing this, some of this money. Some of, part of the reason is due to lack of um, uh, capacity to develop the pro project proposals that these funding agencies require. And so uh, Africa will be asking for technical assistance to help it to access some of these funds. And then thirdly, um, regarding the transition to low carbon, 
Uh, Africa is also going to ask for technology transfer and capacity building to, to help us ask, uh, uh, exploit our huge stocks of carbon that we have and, and which remain unexploited, especially to meet um, energy access. As you know, um, about 600 people on the continent do not have access to electricity and even more do not have access to clean cooling solutions. So access to electricity is very important. Uh, and so they're going to insist that um, they should be allowed to, for those countries that have natural gas resources, such as Ghana and Nigeria, uh, that this should be included in the transition uh, to low carbon. And I know that you say that it, it is not um, all about financing, but financing has been a huge part of the conversation uh, because over and over again, we've seen how um, well the nations have, have failed to deliver on the promise to support emerging economies. Uh, what, are there mechanisms to actually hold them to account? And if there are not, what mechanisms should be put in place to hold wealthier nations to account? Yes. So as you know, the Paris Agreement uh, is not legally binding. Um, so, so the answer to your question is that um, we, 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 th 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 there's no mechanism or legal uh, process by which we can hold these countries accountable, um, uh, which, which is quite unfortunate. Uh, but at this stage, I think it it, ha it will has to it has to be done by moral suasion, um, and of course, sometimes that is very tough to do. Because, for, for example, at COP twenty six, the rich countries agreed that they should pay loss and damage. Uh, so, so basically, they've accepted responsibility to the damage that's been done to uh, uh, environment, especially CO two emissions. Uh, but there was no dollar figure was discussed. Uh, and no sum was discussed. And so I believe that at COP27, this item is still on the table. Um, and so African countries will push uh, for, for a clear uh, signal as to how much money is going to be paid. Uh, in terms of what can be done, I, I, I think we, we just have to present the evidence. And I, I'm very happy that this time at COP27, it seems that Africa has done a lot more of its homework. So the negotiators are going with evidence, with data, uh, and hopefully this would convince them to, to, to honor the pledges that they've made in the past. Uh, and in fact, it, it even goes beyond the pledges because uh, as I've shown, the, uh, the 100 billion that was promised is actually a drop in the bucket. Um, if, if you look at Africa alone, our needs are 1.3 tr trillion over between 2020 and 2030. Uh, on an annual basis, it's around 200 billion that we need to uh, to meet our needs in adaptation, mitigation, and, and also loss and damage. And we'll continue to follow the conversation and see where it leads. Thank you so much for talking to us. Climate and Agricultural Specialist and ACT, ACET Senior Fellow, John Asafawajay.